we know the rupture forwarding a packet is based on the IP routing table. And then, how can a router to form an IP routing table? There are three sources can a router to learn the root items. First, the directed connected network. Okay, when you configure a network, a network IP address into the router's interface, then the router knows the destination is directly connected, okay? This is the first method. And the second method is the IP static route that we will discuss in this chapter. And the IP static route is manually configured by the network administrator. Okay, uh, you can configure it on the router. And then the router knows where to forward the package destination, destination the that destination Designation is a certain network to the next hop, okay? And then the third method is the dynamic routing protocols. In the dynamic routing protocol, we will discuss later in the next chapter, okay? And in this chapter, first, we will explain where to use the IP static route. And then we will discuss how to configure static route and some features of the IP static route, okay? And uh, this is a scenario that we can use static route, okay? And uh, the static route is manually configured. It cannot be changed when the network situations, network topology changes. Such as in this network, there is only one connection between routers. So you can use in a static route here, okay? But if there are the redundancy connections, the static route may be, it's not suitable, okay? For example, there are three routers, okay? Three routers. Router A, router B, and router C, okay? Okay. Then in this scenario, if you, there is a network connected to router C, okay? And then when the router A wants to go to this network, you can configure a static route on router A, then forwarding the packet to router C, okay? That's right, okay. But when the network topology changed, for example, this connection is disrupted, disconnected, Okay, this link disconnected. And then, the static route you configured on router A will not change. So, although there is another path through router B, but the router A did not know, until the network administra administrator to change the configuration, okay, change the configuration manually. So, the static route is not suitable for, for the networks that with redundancy, okay? Cannot change the route dynamically to suit, to fit the change of the network porridge, okay? Uh, of course, the static route uh, also has its advantages. The static route is simple, is simple to configure and is simple to manage. So, such as in this scenario, there's only one link between routers, you can use static route. And uh, if there's only one link between two devices, you can use static route, okay? And then, this is the example of the configuration of a static route. Okay, for example, the router A have directly connected to these two networks, okay? So, the router A must know in the routing table, there are two directed connected routes, okay? This is the first method, the router to learn the, learn the root items, okay? And then, here, this network is not directly connected to the router A. So, if router A wants to reach router B's this network, you should configure a static route, okay? Configure static route. Forwarding the packet the destination for this network, then next hop should be here, okay? 
of course, for the router B is the same. Router B can automatically learn these two network, okay? Because this is direct connected. But for this network, cannot learn it. So need to configure static route. Okay, in this example, the configuration of static routes is on router B. So IP route static. This is a keyword, okay? Then the destination network. This is a destination network. And then this is the mask of the destination network. And then this is the next hop. Next hop, this address, okay? Okay, that's finished. This is one item, okay? One root item will be added to the routing table of router B's, okay? And uh, another method, another method, we can configure this. This is the same. IP root static, and then destination network, and then the mask for the destination network, and then output interface. Output interface. This is another method. But we should know there is some difference. The next hop or the interface, output interface, using output interface only can use in some scenario, not all scenario, but next hop. Next hop, in all conditions, we can use it. Okay. This, the first example, first example, is more widely used. Okay. And then the third, we can abbreviate the mask as this, the mask length. Okay. This is a simplified configuration. Okay. This is an example. Then we will explain. When can we use the output interface? And the when can we use the next hop? Okay. First, if the route is a forwarding packet based on a serial interface, this is a serial interface. So when you configure the static route, you can point it out the output interface, not not only the next hop. Okay, of course, for a serial interface, we should know the serial interface always attached to device, okay? That means if you sending packet out from this interface, then always there's another one device on the other side. So you can configure the static route that output interface all the next hop, it's the same. Okay, these two configuration both can do, okay? But for the broadcast network, for example, this is the ethernet, okay? For the broadcast ethernet, you cannot use the output interface. You must specify the next hop. Why? Because the broadcast network, for example, ethernet, you can connect more than one device for example, connect router C, okay, into this network segment. Okay, if we output on this interface, then who will be the next hub? Router B or the router C? Yeah, that device cannot decide. So, you must specify next hub in the IP static route, okay? This is the two rules. So, Next hop always can do on serial port or the broadcast Ethernet port, okay, Ethernet interface. And uh, the output interface can only work when the connection is a serial line, okay. Yeah, this is the broadcast. The forwarding the package of the broadcast network, such as Ethernet, must specify requires next hop to be defined. That means when the router A wants to send in packet to, for example, this network, you must specify the next hop should be here. If you not specify the out, uh, next hop, but only specify the output interface, then where to go? There's two devices. So the network that device will be confused, okay? So, 
uh, in the broadcast must specify next hop. And then another scenario using the static loops to make a load balance between different links. Okay, for example, on router A and router B, there are two links. So we want the packets between this network and this network can go in through both two links, okay? Of course, one packet is just following one path, okay? That's one packet from this link and another packet from this link, okay? The two links will all be used. How to increment this? Just configure two static loops. Okay, the same destination and the same mask same destination and the same mask, and then different next hops. This next hop, okay, this is the configuration on router B, okay. So the destination is this network, and then this one is 21, this interface, okay. And uh, this one is on um, IP address on this interface. So after this, the router B will put this two routes, this two routes into the routing table of the router B's. Okay, but both put in. Okay, uh, we can we can we can follow in the rule how the router choose the choose the route. Okay, choose the best route. First, compare the preference. Okay. These two are all static routes. So the preference of these two routes, these two routes are all 16, are all 16. And then the metric. This we can, we did not specify the metric. So the metric, the default metric of static routes are all zero, okay? So they have the same preference and the same metric. So these two routes, we are both put in, both as the best route. Okay, then when the packet go in on the router B and the forwarding to this destination, then we are choosing these two routes, choosing one of these two routes randomly. Okay, choose this one or choose this one. Okay, then the packet we are following this route this link or this link, okay. You can see after you configure this, then a uh, router B's routing table. The destination, this is the destination. Network in the mask lens, and then two next hop. This two next hop and this two output interface. These two items will both put into the routing table. And then they are all both static routes, preference 16 and the cost zero, okay? These two routes will be both used. So they can load the balance, okay? Of course, when the router A is sending packet to router B, we can also configure two static routes to make load balance between these two links, okay? And then another scenario is the Floating static route. What's the floating? That means sometimes the static route will disappear. Okay, and sometimes will appear. Okay, the configuration is as this. First, the IP route static, and then destination, of course, is on router B. Then destination is this network, this network. Then first is the next hop here. Okay. And the second is the same, then next hop is here, okay. And uh, the difference between floating static route and the load balance is we change the preference of one of these two static routes. The preference is 100. And then we compare these two routes, who is the best route. First, compare the preference, okay. Then this route wins. So when these two routes 
both effective, then the first root we are put into the routing table, okay? The first root we are put into the routing table. And the second root will not see. You cannot see on the routing table of router B's. So when will this root be appear? When this root item disappear, means this root item. If this root item disappear, then the second root will appear on the routing table, okay? Then when will the first root item disappear? When the link is broken, okay? When the link is down, when the interface is down. So on the router C's interview, in the, in, on, the router's, on the router B's view, the network for this next hop will disappear. So this root items is invalid now. So this root will be root item will deleted from router B's routing table. So only this root will be appear on the routing table. Okay, this is a protein study root. So when this two link is both up, so only the first static root will appear, the second disappear. The next hop is 10. Okay, is 10. And then when the first link is down, disabling the primary root, that's uh, disable the first link. Okay, when the first link is down, then the second link will appear. The destination network, and then the next hop is 20. Okay. This link, this net root appear. Of course, we can see the preference of this, this root is 100 as we have configured. Okay, this is the floating static root. Okay, of course, when the first link is up, then this root will still back, will delete it, and then the previous root will appear on the routing table. Okay, and then Another, okay, this is a static root that's widely used, the default static root. The default static root have a specified destination network as the O zeros, O zeros, and then the next hop. This means that the old destination, that's all root, okay, any packet with the, any IP as the destination IP address, then we are forwarding to this next hop. For the router A, any IP packet we are sending to this next hop. So this is the default route. Then what's the any? We can see the destination is zero, 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 and the mask length is zero. So as we know, the mask length specifies the network, and then there's zero bit worked as the network address. So that's the any network, okay? Any network. Any network should forward into this destination, this next hub. Okay, this is the default static route. And the default static route nowadays is widely used. Uh, for example, if this is a step, step router, that means there's no other connection, then we can use the default IP route. Okay, uh, also there's another scenario that's, for example, this is the exit point, the only one exit point of the company's network, then you can use the st default static route to point to the, for example, internet connections, okay? This is a default static route. Okay, after you configure the default static route, you can check in the IP routing table, at the S IP routing table. The destination is this, and then the next hop is this. Okay, and uh, maybe you will confusing. Uh, if we have configured more than one static route, for example, this is static route, and then I configured it then, 10.0.0.0 and then 8. Then destination may be 20.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0
12 and the 2. Okay, maybe the interface is 0, 0, 1. Okay, and then what will these two items be choose when there is a packet destination for 10, 1, 1, 1. Okay, yeah, this we have already discussed in the previous chapter. The longest match, okay, the longest match. That means this network, this destination IP can match both router items, this router item and this router item, right? Then, of course, this root item have different next hop and different output interfaces. Then, which one will I use? Longest match seed. That's with the longest mask length we are used. So, the default root, the default root, only the mask length is zero, and the this root item have the mask length of eight. So, this root item will be choose. Also, we can get a result that the default root, the zero, means the smallest, the shortest mask length, okay? So, the default root always be choose as the last sort, okay? That means the packet match the all the root items and then all the other root items did not match then we will choose the default root this is the gateway for the last result okay okay then we got to the end there are two questions okay what should be altered what a bit should be changed to enable a static root to becoming a floating static root okay what should be changed? The preference value, okay? By default, the static root using the uh, preference value is the 60, 60, okay? If you want this root to be floating, you can change the, this preference to a bigger one, for example, 100. Then, if there's another static root forwarding with the same destination network, then uh, the static root with the higher priority preference value will be disappear. This is the floating static root. Okay. And then second, what is the network address as the default static root? Okay. Uh, default static root, the network address should be zero, zero 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 and the mask length should be zero okay this is the default route okay 